suggestion from a student long distance, someone that I trained with for a while, are getting pretty proficient, and then I wound up relocating. Anyway, they wanted reminders and suggestions of different stretches that I demonstrated and showed before. So this morning, that's what I'll be doing. Showing a regimen of stretching that I pretty much use daily to make sure that I maintain some level of flexibility going into my graceful aging stages. Some you'll recognize as being um, any other sport such as track and field, etc. Some you'll recognize from meditative arts. I usually begin about here. Place both hands under my knee, under my feet, right above the balls of the foot, towards the toes. So I'm allowing the neck, shoulders, and arms to be relaxed and stretched out. This is what I was referred to or taught previously and the first time that I can recall is a butterfly stretch, mainly because it does just that. You focus on not just hands under the feet, but you want to scoop both heels together and as close as you can get them to your groin. And knees, of course, straight out to each side. You sit for a few minutes, you give this time, you know, to loosen up that inner groin area. And then you also will take your time to breathe in the nose, out the mouth slowly after a few second pauses. Of course, you can repeat that as many times as you feel necessary. And if you experience any discomfort in this position, something like a yoga mat or a carpeted floor may work. But I'm kind of old school, used to hardwood floors, if not concrete or asphalt. So, again, this is a butterfly stretch. One of the reasons why that I understand it to be is because in this position, some people aren't as flexible as myself, so they'll actually be closer to here. But wherever you start at, your aim and your goal is to take your time and relax as far down as possible until you're as close to the floor, if not both knees touching the floor. This unlocks the ball joint in the hips, and it gives you room, of course, for that muscle to flex properly, as I mentioned in a previous video. After a few moments and several breaths, you literally want to butterfly in this position. That teaches you to get the tension, the flex, and the relaxation and later on with elbows to knees or even a partner to place their arms on your shoulders and step with both feet right in between the thigh and knee area to help give you that extra stretch to press down. That's usually for more intermediate folks that have been doing it a while and having issues with flexibility. You don't wanna have anybody bounce like that and you want to make sure that they put the most of their weight on your shoulders and back, not on your knees, and let it be a gradual process to press them down. Take your time with it because you don't want to rush and be injured because the whole purpose of stretching is to prevent injuries and, like I said, improve flexibility. The next thing I'd like to do is to take one foot from this position, take it forward, and then, of course, to rotate my torso so that the foot that was against the other foot is now tucked into the groin. And this is more of a track stretch. And you can do the same thing here. Press it down on the knee to give you that extra flex of that ball joint of the hip for that particular leg. The other stage, as I like to use dual stretching in any position, is to support this foot here, but to reach out, of course, for this foot. If you can come close to touching the toes, touch the toes, or reach beyond, those are different levels of flexibility. The other thing you want to focus on is not just reaching past the toe, but the side blade, blade side of the foot, or the inside of the foot. And some people even take their time and start near the buttocks or hamstring, under the leg with the hand, 
and slowly sweep it forward until you're behind your Achilles heel. And then you can gently tug or reach and relax forward. The goal in this position is for you to just take your time. Everything is slow and relaxed, but you want to focus on your chin, being aligned with, and slightly relax towards that knee. With that, you also want to press it forward as if you're reaching past the foot, even whether your hand is here or if your hand is, of course, on top or sides of the foot. Doing so and reaching with opposite hands teaches you exactly where the muscle is tense and tight at. For some people, you can be flexible to an extent until, of course, you start doing some of the three-dimensional stretching, I call it. And that's where, of course, you're reaching to different sides or using different hands. You start noticing different variations of tension in the muscle. So, secondarily here, I would reach and go back to the beginning, or I would change legs. This one forward, this one tuck. Same thing again. You want to reach and actually give yourself some bit of extra stretch on that leg. Give yourself quite a few moments. Always incorporate the breathing with your stretching. You'll notice as you relax internally, you'll also be increasing your flexibility and promoting good circulation in any stretch. And then secondarily, reaching out over and towards the toes. And do so with both hands in the three different directions. I'm rushing through it somewhat now as I'm moderately flexible and I want to make sure that I have time to cram quite a few stretches into this video. And under the hamstring near the buttocks and forward behind Achilles heel. Again, that's chin to knee. And press forward from chin to knee to chin also to the ball of that foot or that heel. Anything in that general direction is good at getting that lower back to stretch, that glute to stretch, that hamstring to stretch, and for you to actually learn the difference in the variations of releasing the tension in that muscle. Another good one I like is literally rotating from a deep knee bend or actually setting up on your knees. And this is a meditative posture as well. It relaxes your shins and all the flexors involved down into your toes because you're literally sitting on your feet, relaxed. Hands can be here, hands can be along the sides of hips. And in some cases, you can even do some patan sun or meditative breathing that it's known as. The main focus is that you're sitting as equally and flatly on the knee, through the shin, and the ankle is relaxed and stretched on the floor. With a few moments in with this one, your focus should be going from this lower body, like everything in the arts to me, and of course with fitness, I've allowed it to branch up from the roots. You want to start off with your foundation and base, believe it, a force of getting relaxed and grounded, and then as you advance, you want to take your time and do things that are a little more tricky or difficult, and again, if necessary, get you a yoga mat out, so that any injuries, ailments, or discomfort that are there can be minimized while you still maximize the fact that you're going through routine on a daily basis to improve your circulation, your flexibility, prevent injuries, and provoke proper muscle growth. One of my favorites after such is to actually take my time now without lifting my knees or anything at all as I want to do a lower abdominal stretch. So I'll take my time from here and either A, walk back with the hands 
and lay as flat as possible. This is really good for the quadriceps, again, for the shins, the foot arches at the ankle, and basically allowing you to breathe and pay attention to your abdomen or what some people refer to as the lower diaphragm or womb. It's very easy to track your breathing this way and to make sure that you're breathing properly when you inhale in the nose. It should be expanding and actually growing in this direction here in the lower abdomen or womb area. After a deep inhale, you want to pause and hold that for three to five seconds and then exhale from this area straight out of the mouth. Repeat that any number of times that you feel necessary and after at least three to five of those breaths, take your time and rotate your hands from whatever relaxed position you were in to elbows down, hands down, and raise up. Another good one I'm going to share this morning as I'm rushing through these is what we call the leopard stretch or panther stretch. And that's literally similar to what I did down on the shins, ankles, and feet. But in this case, same plank form as a push-up, but from the side appears here. Now what I am going to do is firstly rotate my abdomen up, arms are relaxed, even though almost fully locked out, extended, and still on knees, but I'm breathing out, pause, inhale into the lower diaphragm, through the nose, pause, and then exhale once again, The stretch involved necessary here starts off with knees together, hands shoulder width apart. You want to take your time with your feet pointed in the opposite direction of your head. And you want to spread your knees. You do this to a point to where you can literally slide down and lay as flat as possible to the floor. This is an inner groin and hip stretch, which is good for those that may do a lot of kicking arts or those that actually do running and you want to basically increase the flexibility in your joints, not to have the Charlie horses in your groin. You rotate up, almost like a push up. You use the arms for leverage. And then as you go down, you're actually doing it like a swing. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to turn to the side so that I can show this in more than one angle. We're here to begin with in the breathing and you spread the knees out evenly. You want the feet below the knees in alignment and the hands spread out at least shoulder width apart. Flatten it on down and as you flatten it down, you want to put your chin to the floor not touching, but then rotating forward as you extend up on the arms. And then when you rotate back, it's the reverse motion. You're from here up, you rotate in and down and back up this way. And what that does is it rocks that inner hip and helps loosen it up gradually. Another classic and basic one that I like to use is, of course, your toe touches. Because after working the thighs, the shins, the inner groin, you still want to target that lower back. And anybody that's such as myself has suffered any bit of injuries, you have to keep that loosened up. Rainy days are not fun for us. So, in this case, you don't want to be feet shoulders width apart. You want to have your heels and toes together. Take your time. This is a grounding exercise that I'll demonstrate and show first as it helps you to relax and gain maximum flexibility. Start off feet and toes touching. 
allow that to spread out just minimally. That be close to shoulder width, but just inside. And you want to start with your hands relaxed down to your sides and work them up. And as you're moving and doing so, you want to concentrate on imagining energy all around you, building up, pooling and wailing, broadcasting up. You get about head high, and then you want to take and rotate the hands instead of lifting and pulling, you're now pushing straight up. Rise up on the toes from the upper body lift on up and then slowly descend out to the sides. And once you get out to the sides uh, parallel, you want to start exhaling from here down. And then relax that back down. You want to repeat that at least three times to make sure that you've given your body and your energy some time to ground and release any stagnant blockages of energy. So, second time over, inhale. Exhale. You'll also notice that in that, Shoulders stay back, head stays up and square, but the actual back on your way down, it's like a spring coiling. You are standing between the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot with your knees bent enough so that it's not tension, but you are activating and utilizing that muscle to an extent to where you're actually allowing energy to flow naturally and maintaining balance. Again, it would be in from the normal relaxed position, hands basically floating in water, energy flowing, inhale up. Exhale down. From there, you only use segments of that. Now it's a matter of reach your hands up above your head. Take your time in that to press up, tension the lower back in between the shoulder blades and not tense like as if you're lifting the most weight you ever lifted in life, but just enough for you to feel the muscles activate. You are doing this to warm them up so that the circulation will be proper and allow you to stretch a bit further. But you never want to stretch to the point of pain. You just want to stretch to that point to where you understand, hey, this could be the limit. But if you exhale, you'll also notice that it gives you more room to contract or expand depending on your positioning. So from here, you want to roll over forward first with the fingertips and then the forearms. And then the head and neck, shoulders roll forward and down. Try to count the vertebrae in your back slowly as you allow them to relax forward. And then lastly, the hips. Done correctly and you have no issues with flexibility, touching your toes should be a very easy thing. If you just so happen to only get here, that's still good because you're giving yourself time to stretch and you're going through the motions to improve upon later. Take your time and put both hands on the small of your back in between just above the hips, right in here. And if you take both hands like so and press them into that muscular group there, you can massage and release some tension there along with combination of proper breathing you can exhale with the palms of hands even closer to your feet. As you reach and relax down, exhale. As you cup, of course, for the energy from the grounding exercise before, you want to inhale slowly. You want to repeat that at least two, 
to three times morning and evening that will allow you to like I say promote promote good circulation uh, give your muscles time to grow properly helps you with balance form and posture and it gives you a nice energy boost as a warm-up before any exertive exercise another thing I like to do to add in is your stances there are three that are my go-to one is referred to as a cat stance you are literally standing on one foot at 45 degrees the other one toe forward and literally you bend this knee just enough to support your entirety of your body weight the front foot this leg here is just replacement it's not even necessary to be on the ground. It touches pretty much used in feints, used in changing stands, used in adapting or adjusting to a force that was directed at you. And defensively, you can adjust in this way so that you are not thrown off balance, either by your own mistakes and also by, of course, the aggression of someone that is attacking you. You want to hold this position, like I said, with this knee bent enough to support the entirety of your weight and this just for placement for a minimum of one minute. Hands can be placed in the traditional stance of up for a defensive guard or in other stances offensively. What matters most is the foundation and as you progress in your studies of either self-defense or martial arts, then you'll start understanding the importance of hand posture and placement. Some systems will utilize a very high guard, other systems a very tight and close guard, and some one that is adaptable on the fly, but you better be good in order to use that. Again, we can change that foot at 45 degrees, that one just stepping forward, all of your weight on this leg, so this one is not necessary for support, and you want to remain in this position for a minimum of one minute. This is what I refer to as a cat stance. What you will notice in this stance, depending on the depth that you present yourself in it, it will activate your quadricep muscles and your glutes. The calf and foot arch of the leg that you're actually standing on are all doing the work. The other, just in demonstrative proper form, is there for adaption or mobility. My second stance after such would be the L stance, which depending on your flexibility, starts off as one leg stepping out further than shoulder length, the other leg turning on the ball of the foot, which is raising onto the toes, that pad, stepping out, and heel not quite on the floor, but the other foot pointing directly, um, perpendicularly from yourself, forming an L. You want to bend this knee as much as is comfortable for you, but always keep this side, this hand aligned over this knee, behind this knee. You want to keep your back as straight as possible. You want to take time to allow your side foot to slide back on the blade of the foot, ball of the foot, and heel of the foot simultaneously. These are things that maintain your balance. 
This one, most of the weight is on the ball of the foot. Here it's equally dispersed. This is yet another groin stretch, hamstring stretch, and a balancing act so that you're stretching out your hips in different areas. Place your hand either at the mid of the thigh, above the knee, and this is the same thing, the hip, mid thigh, or above the knee. And you wanna hold this for at least a minute. So we want to switch now. I'm not quite 100% sure on the timing because I don't have a stopwatch in front of me I'm trying to view the camera, but the distance in order for it to view me is a bit back. You want to raise up on this ball of the foot, turn and pivot so that now both feet are pointing forward. And then this one, raise up on the ball of the foot and pivot it out so now that you've switched sides. And you repeat and do the same thing for at least a minute. One hand either right between the hip and thigh, middle thigh, or right up behind the knee. Same thing here. This one now is perpendicular, completing that bottom of the L. And this one is going the other direction so that you have that L. This knee is now bent. This leg is now straight, but now the balance weight and standing on the ball, blade, and heel of the foot equally there while you're mainly just on the ball of the foot of this leg. It's very important to remember that when you switch stances, especially in the L, because it allows you to gain extra flexibility in your hips, hip flexors, quarter strips, and hamstring. All which are necessary for, like I said, runners, people who do distance or sprints or kickers within the martial arts and self-defense community. Some people would prefer to do a little bounce, but I wouldn't say quite a bounce. You do want to give yourself that extra sensation of mobility of the joints, hip, knee, etc. But a bounce isn't really a good thing if you're just getting started out. You want this to be as much of a static stretch as possible, paying attention to what's necessary for you to relax into it or tense and hold a form and stance. Now the third, bring both feet together, back in about just beyond shoulder width apart. You want to bend both knees beyond just a slight bend. You want to bend them enough to where you can feel the muscle activating, but you want to keep your arms, your head and neck as squared and straight with proper posture as possible and bend your knees enough to where you can feel it and actually exert some effort in this position. This is a horse stance. Everything from your foot arches to your calves to your quadriceps and somewhat your glutes are being used. Holding this position anywhere from one to five minutes for, for, for beginners can prove difficult, will burn calories, will make you sweat, but you wanna do it until of course you feel your legs get into that jello -y or that numbing sensation or even burning. And you wanna relax into that with deep breathing in the nose, into here, feel it expand down as you breathe in. Pause and hold for three to five seconds. And then exhale slowly from here up and out. You repeat that at least three times. In the nose. Out the mouth. Again, in the nose. And out the mouth. 
those are three, four, five, so many points that I've used. I had to make sure I shared that this morning. I was asked for some reminders. There's other arm stretches that are necessary. Ones that you can utilize standing, seating, really doesn't matter much. Get a chair here is a problem, kind of help out. You want to take and of course lift one foot up with a nice chamber. Set that foot down on the chair. Reach beyond the chair. Balance your weight on the back of the chair. And then with that same ball of foot there, you got it bouncing now to show that, yeah, it's top, touching the top of the chair. You want to relax forward to stretch. And then you want to inhale and back up off of it. Exhale down with your stretch. Inhale back up off of it. Very good for anyone that's experienced knee or leg injuries and you're trying to work beyond some pain to get that range of motion and functionality back. It's up with the chamber. Instead of kicking, which of course I'm not doing now, I'm just showing some form and yet another stretch that I use. It's here. Exhale as you stretch down. Inhale as you come back up. Well, I've taken a few of your minutes this morning. Apologize for the length, but I wanted to have time to demonstrate and show those and submit what I, of course, promised to do yesterday. Comment, let me know what you think of the content, anything that you'd like to see specific, and as long as it's within my ability, I have no problem sharing, showing, and demonstrating. Everybody have a great morning. Enjoy your energy. Breathe correctly. Always be mindful of your posture and have a great day.